So hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to Liquidity Provider Insights number five by Sommelier. I am joined here with the Sommelier co-founder, Zaki Manian. And what we're going to do is talk about what happened last week and what you as a liquidity provider need to remember as you try to make your way through this treacherous and bloody time in DeFi. And Elon Musk, if you're listening, please tweet, you love sommelier. I think uh, that will cause the market to change direction. <laughs> All right, Zucky, so it was a rough week. <laughs> it was uh, a rough week. It was absolutely it was a rough week. Um, yeah. uh, but, you know, uh, you know, times of high volatility are good are, are good times for liquidity providers, lots of opportunities to, to, to deploy liquidity and make money, uh, uh, especially when everything sort of rebounds. Uh, right. uh, uh, as it has, um, you know, you're just looking at Uniswap V3 volumes continue to, to, to sort of skyrocket, um, you know, uh, crossing uh, $2 billion uh, on, uh, on what was this? I think this was Thursday and on, on, yeah. Uh, on yeah. Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, we like uh, continue to see like uh, uh, increasing amounts of volume on Uniswap V3. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, the other thing that's like really nice to see is, you know, back when uh, we launched the pairings app on Uniswap V3, uh, we looked at two recommendations. Uh, one, this is this was our neutral recommendation for providing liquidity over the price. And this was our bullish recommendation uh, for uh, for providing liquidity on the USDC price, uh, both in range, both making money. Uh, Wait, hold on, this. hold on. Don't go so fast. That was kind of close. 1970.5. I mean, that was that was pretty close. No, I mean, we yeah, have, yeah, but we Mike, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's all about, you know, the time in position rather than uh, right, right, right. But, you know, this is this is a uh, this is the this is the strength of going with statistical analysis or going with your gut. Um, Correct. And like, let the numbers do the talking because, you know, yep. crypto yep. is a volatile market. Um, right. And, you know, as, uh, you know, the technology of interacting with Uniswap V3 is continuing to improve and we're continuing to work on it. But like, you know, these early recommendations are really, have, have really been like a good, uh, a good opportunity for people to, to, to come in and provide liquidity. Um, so, so would you say that liquidity providers, um, because, you know, they most likely may not have, you know, if you're a retail liquidity provider, um, you know, on Uniswap V3, you don't have a big data science team. You don't have a big statistics, you know, person working for you. So you're gonna guess, and your guess could never predict these types of wild gyrations. So it's better to have someone who can help you at least take a position that makes it really easy, so that at least the, the boundaries or where your liquidity is provided um, will survive. And and it seems like you've survived the the route. Um, and you're continuing to make money, which is yep. which is so important. Um, and so, is it your view that really more liquidity providers will be turning to um, these types of automated, you know, sort of um, statistical solutions? Because really, it's it's just much better than than using your head. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a inevitable migration towards an ecosystem of tools um, mm -hmm. around being a liquidity provider in Uniswap. Um, and as as the volume continues to move to Uniswap V3, uh, the opportunity is in concentrated liquidity, um, and right. uh, it's all about just making the tools to make that tractable. Right. Now, you know, we're hearing a lot about all these um, automated rebalancing vaults being launched. I think you know this week um, the Lixer team has been working very hard. We heard about Charm. Um, how does this differ? How do these automated vaults differ from what you did here with, with pairings? And, and how should a liquidity provider look at the two, these alternatives? Um, so, you know, I expect the space to rapidly evolve. Like, what, what's right. what, first is, is a rapid evolution. Um, mm -hmm. these, um, these vault products are basically the idea of fire and forget. Um, Put your money into this vault. Um, there's a, a system that controls it, and you know we're building our own version of this. This is our 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 work on the seller protocol is all about the sommelier version of an automated vault. Um, 
And um, we're like, what, what, you know, what we've done here is this is still a static position, right? Um, right, right static right, right. position. Uh, you're starting to see people experiment um, with, with like sort of being their own vault where they have uh, lots of positions open um, as, as ranges and they're moving liquidity back and forth um, uh, during the day and like sort of the power users are emerging. Um, the vaults are starting to emerge where people experiment with different approaches around um, and different strategies um, operating. Um, but you know, sommelier, this version of sommelier was basically designed around like a very passive, uh, to work really well for a sort of passive LP that is putting in a small position, wants it to earn, wants it to make money, doesn't want to interact with it too much. And um, you know, uh, you know, it was very much an experiment to see how this would work out. Um, yeah. Um, and I do think it's been working out, but you know, the arms race continues, um, uh, and we expect that there's going to be a place for for pairings type recommendations, and there's going to be a place for uh, active management. Um, and both of these things are going to continue to evolve. Right. That's excellent. It's going to continue seeing more of a beer market as we go into the next few weeks. Like, what's your view of the market? You know that we liquidity providers, you know, might might be able to be able to use. Like, are you bearish or are you bullish? Um, I think that like what we saw over the weekend seems like an almost unprecedented situation uh, yeah. where we had really a Bitcoin led, uh, 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 Bitcoin <laughs> spot price led uh, 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 decline in the market. Um, right. uh, and, you know, really, uh, and there seems to be a sort of net asset flow from Asia to, uh, uh, and specifically out of China and into Western buyers. Um, why did this, that happen? Well, I mean, we're hearing all of these stories about uh, um, a real crackdown on mining Chinese mining operations and especially oh. sort of fossil fuel powered Chinese mining operations. Um, right. And, you know, from what I know about the mining business, you know, a lot of these miners are, are, are debt run businesses. And the expected payoff period of these capital assets that they've that they, they, they have purchased through debt suddenly has been shortened enormously. Um, right. And you have to rearrange your entire business around an entirely new cash flow uh, profile that came out of a government announcement. Um, but, you know, this is also probably going to be in the long run good for uh, good for Bitcoin um, in the sense right. that it's going to push a lot of more hash power out of China uh, and, yep. and hopefully push towards more green hash power. That is amazing. So, so Bitcoin benefits from hash power going cleaner and being banned, dirty hash power being banned in China, Bitcoin benefits because now it's going to go more likely to renewable cleaner hash power outside of China is, you know, like, how do you like, what, what do you say to, to Elon Musk when that happens? Is it like, you know, like do people really, I, I don't understand. Maybe my question is, um, is that like the invisible hand at work? Or is that just like a fluke? I'm, mean, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I think that you know, there has been a confluence of events that have pushed um, uh, the carbon intensity of uh, uh, of mining and whether or not mining is it, it, like, you know, how mining interacts with renewable energy from being yeah. like a fringe topic uh, discussed right. by a bunch of nerds to like the top yeah. of the consciousness. Um, yes. And it may have, you know, it, it, it's like one interpretation of what's happening in China is less that like suddenly the central government became super concerned about mm -hmm. like some because of some change. Um, and right. it's more just the 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 idea, the public perception, the perception of the mining industry suddenly just like was raised in the consciousness to the point where people, just, people in the government want Chinese government wanted to act directly. Um, wow. Wow. But like, you know, there's there's also like very little sign that there is a that this was a bigger that there's a bigger crackdown on cryptocurrency um, right, sort right. of underway. Um right. in China. It just seems very it seems very targeted to the mining industry um and like a desire that, you know, what mining continues in China. And so you would ask the question, like, oh, well, you can't use um uh uh, uh coal coal fired uh coal-based power to power your Bitcoin miners anymore. Why don't you just move it to where there's um, 
uh, uh, where there is hydropower, China has, you know, famously has enormous dams that generate large amounts of yeah. hydroelectric power. Um, and right. I think the reality of the situation is, is all that hydroelectric power has, is used for mining and has been for a long time. Um, right. And right. so there isn't really any surplus capacity there. So it really means that that hash power has to, has to plan to move abroad. Got it. Got it. Wow, that's that that is amazingly good for Bitcoin. Just amazing to hear that. All right, so I guess uh, also um, maybe as we go into next week, you have some new ideas percolating uh, for liquidity providers. Um, I don't want you to have to re release anything new, but I am you know hearing whispers that uh, you know you have some new ideas that uh, to help pool operators and liquidity providers that you're you're currently working on, huh? I mean, so the things that we're very excited about is like there's just enormous progress happening with the Uniswap B3 staking contract um, yep. uh, happening. That's uh, right. You know, that's right. That's, that's right. That, that is, I think, going to be the biggest. Like, there's two big events right now. Is like the early launch of these, like the progress on these, on these, um, the progress on these automated vaults and the evolution yes. towards automated vaults. Um, and the second thing is that that you know we're going to start seeing liquidity mining uh, on Uniswap v3 in the near future. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, and come to Sommelier and we're going to help guide liquidity providers through this. This is awesome. Uh, I can't wait to uh, have more liquidity providers take a look and we'll see you next week. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Zeki. Cheers. Bye.